Welcome back, guys. We have learned all about scientific notation and significant figures and error. So now we're going to go back to what you read in the book about units of measurement and figure out how can we combine this math that we've learned with these units so we can do actual chemistry problems. So just to review, Science uses the international system of units in order to standardize calculations around the world. If we all used different types of measurements, it would be really hard to share math across the globe. So um, we've created one standard unit of measurement that's used everywhere. We call it the metric system here in the States. Um, it's called the SI units for short, based on the French that the name came from, because uh, I'm going to have you guys watch a little tiny history video from Ted that talks about how they actually got the um, metric system started and what was its purpose. Here in America and in some places in Britain, we tend to use what's called the imperial units, like inches and miles and things like that. Um, but the rest of the world pretty much uses the SI units, so that's what we're going to learn for science now. All of these are based on the power of 10, so it makes really um, all the conversions really simple. So let's move on. The base units, these are the ones that make up the, the basic part of the metric system. You have the meter that measures length, its symbol is M. The kilogram that measures mass, its symbol is kg. You have Kelvin, which measures temperature. Its symbol is k, not degrees k, just k. Now, Celsius is used so commonly worldwide that it's a, a, an unofficial SI unit, essentially, for, for temperature. And we're going to learn how to convert between degrees Celsius and Kelvin. Second is the uh, unit for time, the symbol is S, and the mole measures the amount of a substance, its symbol is MOL. There's also ampere and candela. We are not going to be talking about those in this class, so we don't need to talk about them now. Now, with these base units, we can actually take them and create new units from them that are called derived units. So we um, combine and manipulate these base units to make brand new ways of measuring something. For example, a liter. Volume is not fundamental in its own right. We calculate the volume by calculating um, meters or length. So you, you take length times width times height and you get a volumetric measurement. So it's a derived unit from multiple different lengths. Density is the same thing. It measures how compact or close together the molecules of a substance are, but it's measured as a ratio. We take its mass and we divide it by its volume. How much does it weigh essentially um, over how much space it's taking up? Another one that we'll use later in the year is the Pascal, and it measures pressure or the force exerted on an object. So as I said, the metric system is based off of powers of 10. So this table in your book, table 3.2 on page 75, is probably one of the most important things that you're going to have to memorize in this class, along with the, um, the elements themselves and some of their information. We're going to be using this all year, so I would highly recommend that you start memorizing it right away. It's going to become second nature to you eventually, but it'll take a little bit of practice until then. So you're going to have to memorize the prefix name, what its symbol is, and know its factor. So what we mean by factor is how many times does the base unit fit into this number or does this number fit into the base unit? So um, we're going to go into that a little bit more as we keep going. Examples could be like the kilogram for kilo. For centi, we could talk about the centimeter. Now this one here is the only tricky one. That is the symbol for micro. It's called the mu. It looks like a little U with a tail on it. Um, so that's going to probably be the one that trips you up the most to write, but you'll get used to it as we go on. Now, 
unit conversions are essential to life because we don't just keep everything in one nice perfect unit and go about our life. Uh, we're constantly converting between different units just for ease of use. It would be really hard to tell your friend, oh, I'll see you in uh, 9,224 minutes. Uh, we would just say in a few days or in a few hours or something like that. So we need to convert units to make them more manageable. So we do that by using what we call conversion factors. These are ratios that signify equivalent measurements. So for example, 60 seconds is the same as one minute. So we can write a conversion factor, 60 seconds over one minute or it can be written one minute over 60 seconds. Oops, just S, sorry. Another way that you can write it is one minute equals 60 seconds, vice versa. So let's go over some of these conversion factors. Let's start with the top one here. Let's say I have one megagram and I want to know its conversion into grams. So I'm going to be converting all of these into their base unit. So in this case, all I have to look for is the factor that I multiply the base unit by. So one megagram is equal to 10 to the sixth grams. One kilometer, if I look on my table here, is equal to 10 to the third meters. A deciliter is 10 to the negative 1 liters, and so on and so forth. So centimeter is 10 to the negative 2 meters. Milli is 10 to the negative third grams. Micro seconds, 10 to the negative 6 seconds. Nanometers is 10 to the negative 9 meters. And picograms is 10 to the negative 12th grams. Now, if we're looking at our columns, we have a column with a prefix, and we have a column with a base unit and an exponent. The exponent is always with the base unit. So if you're ever confused about where you put the base unit, you put it with the ex or where you put the exponent, I'm sorry, you always put it with the base unit. Because what we're essentially saying here is one centimeter means 10 to the negative second meters. Let's actually put that one to the test really quick. 10 to the negative second, that's 0 0.001 meters. So that's a very small amount, but a centimeter is very, very small. There's about two... Um, two and a half centimeters in an inch. So you're talking about a really small measurement. So that kind of makes sense there. It's the same as saying there's a hundred centimeters in one meter. So these conversion factors here are essentially saying one picogram is 10 to the negative 12th grams or means 10 to the negative 12th grams. Let's see how this works in action now. So the first example, I want you to convert 30, oh, 321 centimeters to meters. Sorry about that. So the first thing I wanna do is find my conversion factor. So I wanna be converting centimeters to meters. So step one is find your conversion factor. For now, I would take the table and always keep a picture of it by your side or on your phone. That way you can have it just right away to look at until you just learn to memorize these things. So let's look at centimeter on our table. And so centimeter is equal to 10 to the negative two meters. So now I have my conversion factor ready to go. The second thing you wanna do is to write the number that you wanna convert. Write down what you want to convert. In this case, it's gonna be 321 centimeters. 
Now, part three, you're going to add in your conversion factor in a fraction form. So add the fraction form of your conversion factor. And the key thing with this is you want to be able to cancel units. So you can cancel your units because I want to get rid of centimeters and only have meters left over. So I'm adding that into my equation that I started building up above. In this case, my conversion factor is going to have centimeters on the bottom and meters on the top. That way I can cross out the centimeters. Now going back to the conversion factor that I wrote up here at the top, one centimeter is equal to 10 to the negative second meter. Now you're going to solve this just like a normal math problem. So solve the problem. You can use your calculator for all of these. So this one, though, you don't really need to. You have 321 times 10 to the negative second meters. We can put that into scientific notation, which is just 3.21 times 10 to the zero meters. And that's your answer. It's also just 321 meters, if you're curious. Or I'm sorry, 3.21 meters. <laughs> Um, that's one thing that you should always do. Once you've gotten your final answer, see if it makes sense. So I said earlier that there was 100 centimeters in one meter. So it makes sense that if I have 321 centimeters, that's going to be around 3.2 meters. So my answer, it makes sense. If I had a number like 3,000 meters, that wouldn't make sense. So always just try to use common sense in the end. So let's do another example here. This time I'm not going to write down all the four steps as I go, so you may want to have that in your notes to refer back to. Just keep them on the side when you're doing these problems so you know what steps to do. So first things first, I want to create my conversion factor. So I'm going from meters to centimeters. So I want to find that on my table. And I'm going to say that a centimeter is equal to 10 to the negative second meters. Now let's go into the problem itself. I'm going to be working with 1.2 meters to start, and I want to convert it to centimeters. So I want to get meters to cancel. Usually when I'm doing any type of math or science word problem, I always start by trying to figure out uh, what is the problem asking for? What are the final units that I'm going to have to have? So in this case, it was asking me to convert to centimeters. So what I'll often do is I'll just put a little centimeter with a question mark by the side, or I'll box centimeter in the question, anything to make it stand out to me that that's what I'm looking for in the end. I know it seems simple now, but it will help you in the long run when we're doing multi-step problems that can get kind of confusing. So I have 1.2 meters and I need to convert that to centimeters. I'm going to take my conversion factor and put it into a fraction form with meters on the bottom. That way I can cancel them out. And now I can just Simplify it and do the math on my own if I want to, or I can just plug it into a calculator, and I'll end up with 1.2 times 10 to the second centimeters. If you want to double check yourself and write it out, just because we're still learning scientific notation, that's perfectly fine. It's going to be, if I move the decimal over, 1.20 or 120 centimeters. And that makes sense. If I have 1.2 meters, 120 centimeters definitely would fit into that amount. So it's it makes common sense, not just definition sense. Now let's do two more. I'm going to simplify these even more as we go. So we're converting milligrams to grams. So this time I'm going to be using the milli prefix. So milligrams is equal to 10 to the negative third grams. 
I have 1200 milligrams that I'm trying to convert. So I'm going to put milligrams on the bottom and grams on the top. And that's going to give me one, two, zero, zero times 10 to the third, negative third grams. Or if we want to simplify that, it's going to be 1.2 times 10 to the zero grams. That way it's also in scientific notation. But in this case, it was probably just simpler to write 1.2 grams. Our next one, we're going from grams to milligrams this time, so we're doing the opposite. So we're still working within the same conversion factor here. Milligrams is equal to 10 to the negative third grams. But this time I'm starting with 4.7 grams that I want to convert. So if I take my conversion factor, putting grams on the bottom, that way I'll be able to cancel out my units and one milligram on the top. I end up with 4.7 over 10 to the negative third milligrams. When I let my calculator or my brain do that math, in the end, I end up with 4.7 times 10 to the third milligrams. Or it may have come out on your calculator as 4,700 milligrams. Now that was all for just one step. We went from something to the base unit. But what if I'm skipping over the base unit and I'm going from something like milliliters to kiloliters? Well, there we have a two-step conversion process, not just a one-step conversion process. So you're actually going to have to first convert to the base unit and then convert from the base unit to the final unit. So we're going to be working with two different conversion factors here. So first things first, you still want to find your conversion factors, but now we're going to have two. So I'm working with milliliters and I'm working with kiloliters here. So milliliters is equal to 10 to the negative third liter. A kiloliter is equal to 10 to the third liters. I start with my problem, 2,196 milliliters. And the first thing that I want to cancel out is my milliliters. So I'm going to be working with this conversion factor first, putting milliliters on the bottom. It's going to be one milliliter for 10 to the negative third liters. Then I'm going to want to use my second conversion factor to cancel out my liters. So I'll have kiloliters on the top and liters on the bottom. 10 to the third liters, one kiloliter. Then I just solve the math for that problem. And I'm going to end up with two 0.196 times 10 to the negative third kiloliters is my final answer because we crossed out all the other units and we were left with kiloliters. Now, you know how I had you guys practice doing scientific notation calculations by hand? Well, that's going to make doing these problems a lot easier. If I'm just converting with the number one and it's just exponents that I'm manipulating, I'm going to end up with 2,196 times 10 to the negative third over 1 times 10 to the third, because that's what that means essentially. If it's just 10 to the third, it's the same thing as saying 1 times 10 to the third. So if I know how to add, subtract, and multiply and divide my numbers in scientific notation, I end up with 2,196 with 10 to the negative third exponent in my numerator minus positive three in my denominator. So I'd end up with negative six as my exponent. Then once we convert this number here into a decimal for our proper scientific notation, we'll have to readjust the, uh, the exponent there. But 
it might be faster if you learn to just start working with these exponents by hand. However, you will never get docked off points for using a calculator for these. If that makes you feel more comfortable to solve these problems, go right ahead. So let's do a couple more examples here. I'm not going to be doing them the long way where I show you how we work with the exponents, but if you're ever curious about that, I can give you um, an answer key for this with my notes on it that shows you how I would work through that problem. Just assume that for all of these, we're going to be using a calculator. So we're going to be converting 14,000 centimeters to megameters this time. So my conversion factor, I'm going to need two is going to be from megameters to meters and centimeters to meters. So centimeters is 10 to the negative 2 meters, and megameters is 10 to the 6th meters. I'm starting with 14,000 centimeters. So I want to cancel centimeters out first. So I'll start with this conversion factor first. Put centimeters on the bottom so we can cancel out. 10 to the negative 2 meters, which is its equivalent, on the top. Then I want to cancel out meters. So I'll have to put 10 to the 6th meters on the bottom, and that is equivalent to 1 megameter. Cross out all my units, and I will get in the end 1.4 times 10 to the negative 4th megameters. Remember, always put it in scientific notation. Now here's one that I already started in scientific notation for you, and we're going from picograms to kilograms. So let's erase this and this, because now we're going from picograms to kilograms. So my first conversion factor is gonna be PG2, or is equal to 10 to the negative 12th, kilograms. My second conversion factor, or I'm sorry, grams, not kilograms. My second conversion factor is going from grams to kilograms. 10 to the third grams. All right. Then we start with 3.6 times 10 to the fifth picograms. So I want to cancel out my picograms first. Put that on the bottom with its equivalent on the top. Then I want to cancel out grams now, so I'll put grams on the bottom so it cancels out, and kilogram on the top. That way I'm left with the unit that I want. So this one, you should get 3.6 times 10 to the negative 10th kilograms as your final answer. Now remember guys, if you are having problems with any of these, just write down the problem or put a star next to it and ask me when we first start class, hey, can you go over this one? And I will do every single part step by step so you really understand what's going on, okay? I know um, I just wanna try to get through these quicker for you so you don't have a long video to watch. Now, how many milliliters would it take to fill a three liter water bottle? What you, should, what you should do right now is try to pause the video and answer this one on your own, and when you're ready, you can press play, and I will show you how we get the answer for it. So, milliliters to liters, we're looking at a conversion factor of 10 to the negative 3. So I have a 3 liter water bottle. I want to cancel my units, so I want to put liters on the bottom and milliliters on the top. That'll cancel out the liters there. And I end up with 3 times 10 to the 3 milliliters, or 3,000 milliliters. That makes sense. All right, let's move on to the next one. Once again, try to pause this one before you move on. Um, figure it out on your own and then get the answer and see if you were right. So we're converting from kilometers to megameters. So in this case, it's going to be a two-step conversion process. I'm going from kilometers to 10 to the third meter, and then I'm going to be going from megameter to 10 to the sixth meters. So one thing that you may want to do for this one is convert this big number into scientific notation. 
So that's the number originally in scientific notation. You're going to have 1.5 times 10 to the eighth kilometers. So that's going to be the number that we are starting with here, 1.5 times 10 to the eighth kilometers. I want to cancel out my kilometers first, so they will be in the bottom, my meters on top. Then I want to cancel my meters in the second part of the equation. So all I'm left with is one megameter. When I do that, I am left with 1.5 times 10 to the fifth megameters. That is how far we are from our solar system star. All right, this one and the next problem, I'm not going to answer for you here. I want to go over them in class. So pause the video, write down your answer, then move on to the next slide. Once again, with this one, pause the video, write down your answer, and then move on to the next slide because we're going to go over it in class rather than on this slide. So here's one with a conversion factor that we haven't really worked with yet, but you probably have done it in math classes in the past. So we know that there's 525,600 minutes in a year, but how many seconds are in a year? So in this case, we're going to be working with a bunch of different uh, numbers as we convert through. So I'm starting with one year. How do I cancel out one year? Well, I want to put one year on the bottom. And how many days are in a year? 365 days. Then I want to cancel out my days. One day is equal to 24 hours. One hour is equal to 60 minutes. And finally, one minute is equal to 60 seconds. Add all, or multiply, excuse me, multiply all that up and you should end up with 3.1536 times 10 to the seventh seconds. Now, if you do know off the top of your head how many minutes are in the year, you could always just uh, shorten this a little bit for yourself. If you know that there's 5.256 times 10 to the fifth minutes in a year, then you can convert all that other stuff and just jump straight to the final step. All right, here's our next one. I want you guys to do this one on your own again and come prepared uh, to go over the answer in class. So pause the video, do what you need to do, and then move on. So now, just like we did with that last problem where we were converting from years to seconds, that one involved many different conversion factors. I started with that one because we're very familiar with how to convert between minutes and seconds, but those are all different units. That really is a dimensional analysis problem. So if I have a real-world, multi-step, multi-unit conversion problem, this is the tool that I want to use to solve it. So it's usually involved um, when we're looking at derived units. So conversions tend to be focused just on base unit calculations, going from kilometers to meters or kilometers to centimeters. But what about if I want to go from volume to density? So I'm going to be using a base unit and a derived unit. So let's take a look at our first dimensional analysis problem. This is one that's going to be very stereotypical of what we're going to be doing throughout the year in this class. We're taking density and we're trying to find one of the units that uh, is in this derived unit. So I have 0.75 milliliters of water and I know that the density of water is one gram per milliliter. So how many grams of water do I have? So I'm looking for grams. That's going to be my final answer. I'm starting with knowing the density and the volume. So density, if you guys don't remember from middle school, is a measure of mass over volume. 
So that's going to be the equation that we're working with in here. So not only do we have to work with equations when we're doing dimensional analysis, but we, we may need to even convert within those equations. So maybe this was liters and not milliliters. That would have involved an extra step of conversion, and we'll get into that later on. But for now, let's start with this. I'm going to plug in all of my numbers into this equation. So I know that my density is one gram per milliliter. And it's going to equal the grams that I'm trying to find as my final answer over the volume of the water. And my volume is 0 0.75 milliliters. So now I just solve this like your normal algebraic problem. I'm going to have one gram per milliliter times 0 0.75 milliliters because I want to multiply both sides of the equation by the factor that I'm trying to get rid of. I'm going to cross out my units and I'm going to end up with 0 0.75 grams of water. So this one just happened to work out kind of nicely because uh, the volume of water is equivalent to its mass because of the fact that its density is one at normal pressure and temperature in a room. So let's take what we just did in that simple problem and apply it to a problem that's a little more difficult as far as the numbers go. It's not just a one-to-one -one conversion here. So the density of oxygen at normal air temperature and air pressure is 1.429 grams per, little, per liter. Excuse me. If you have 5 liters of oxygen, what's the mass of the oxygen in the space that you have? So once again, my density is going to be equal to my mass over my volume. And I want to be calculating mass again. So my answer is going to be in grams. So in this case, the density is 1.429 grams per liter. And it's going to be equal to the mass that I'm looking for over 5 liters of oxygen. So I want to multiply both sides times 5 liters to cross that out. And I am left with... Let me find where I wrote down the answer there. 7.145 grams of oxygen. So these ones haven't needed any conversions as of yet, but we are going to do one in a little bit that does need conversions. This one here is a dimensional analysis problem because we're going between two different units technically. We're still de dealing with temperature, but we have to convert between Celsius and Kelvin. So if a thermometer in your lab says that the air temperature is 21.2 degrees Celsius, but you need to know what it is in Kelvin in order to do the experiment that you want to do, how would you solve that? Well, as you read in your book, or you should have read in the book, Kelvin is equal to whatever your degree Celsius is, plus 273. So all we have to do is just plug in these numbers into the equation. So it's not too bad. Plus 273. And in this case, our temperature in Kelvin is going to be 294.2 Kelvin. And you always want to put just the K. Remember, there's no degrees Kelvin. We only do that with Celsius and Fahrenheit. Okay, last problem, last slide. Let's put it all together now. In this problem, we're going to have to do conversions and a dimensional analysis problem. So first things first, let's look at what the problem is asking us. If a bullet travels 3.7 times 10 to the third meters in one second, how far in kilometers will it travel in 1.8 minutes? So I'm looking for kilometers in my final answer. So I need to keep that in mind as I travel. 3.7 times 10 to the third meters in one second. That's going to be the speed of my bullet. So my bullet is traveling in meters per second. And I want to figure out kilometers per minute in order to do this calculation. So I'm going to have to convert my units 
from meters per second to kilometers per minute. So the best thing to do with these multi-step problems is to get your conversions done first and then figure out the answer to your problem. So let's start with our meters first, our distance. We know that a kilometer is the same as 10 to the third meters. So if I have 3.7 times 10 to the third meters per second, in order to cancel out my meters, I want to put the meters part of my conversion factor on the bottom in the denominator. That will cancel that out, and I will be left with 3.7 times 10 to the third kilometers over 10 to the third seconds. These two factors can also cancel out, so you are left with 3.7 kilometers per second. So step one is done, we got that done. Now we need to figure out our conversion from seconds to minutes. So if I'm starting with 3.7 kilometers per second, and I wanna to go to kilometers per minute, I need to cancel out my seconds. In this case, they'll have to go on the top. So 60 seconds is equivalent to one minute. My seconds cancel out. And I'll have to do some math, multiply 3.7 by 60, and you get 2.22 times 10 to the 2 kilometers per minute. So now I have con converted my starting point to what I'm going to need to actually do this final problem here. How far will it travel in kilometers per minute? So now let's do this next part. I want to know if the bullet travels for 1.8 minutes, how far will it travel? So I'm looking for distance, so I have to cancel out my time in order to just be left with distance. So in this case, 2.22 times 10 to the second kilometers per minute is going to be multiplied by the time that my bullet is in the air, 1.8 minutes. When I do that, my minutes will be able to cancel out. And I'm left with the answer of 400 kilometers, because that's all that's left for my units. That is me rounding. You're supposed to get uh, 3.996 times 10 to the 2. So if that came up on your calculator, you did it right. I just rounded it to make the number a little bit happier. So once again, guys, if you were having trouble with any of these, please write down which one it was and ask me to go over it again in class step by step. That way you can watch me write out all of the problems. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you guys soon.